All right, I think I'm ready. I'm situated. I'm prepared. As prepared as I'm ever going to be. Hello and welcome to the stream, boys. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. We are in the middle of doing trials and tribulations. We just did a trial. We got through it relatively unharmed. We bought ourselves an extra day of investigation. Let's review the case as it stands at the moment, all right? We have a man who died. His name is Glenn Elk. It's a palindrome. He died by poisoning. We think that the- well, not we. People think that the waitress, Maggie Bird, did it. We are trying to defend her because she was defended by our phony in court the first time and got convicted uh, and, and, and was guilty, actually. But we got the, the, that case overturned because uh, we proved that uh, you can't actually run a trial with a fake lawyer. That's very much not a legal thing. And so the, co the case was thrown out. Now we've got to try and prove her innocence, but we're up against Godot. It's going to be a challenge, so we're going to need to do some more investigations, and I'm going to probably have to try and speak a little more French. <laughs> Let's start things right away, and while we get loaded, let's see, uh, I think some hellos are in order. Cosmetology Corner, hello! How was your day? Hope your mother's surgery went well. Aw, thank you. And yes, uh, my mother, she had her surgery. It went delightfully, in fact. Uh, no big issues. Now she has a smaller cast on her wrist, and apparently, uh, that cast will come off in February, and then she'll begin physical therapy, uh, to like, I don't know, move her thumb and whatnot? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's where that stands right now. She can't cook at the moment. Uh, so I did stop over at my parents around dinner time to like check in on her surgery and also, you know, as their loving child, get a free meal. Uh, but since my mother doesn't cook right now, my father has apparently stepped up to the plate and he's doing the cooking. And bless his heart, it's great, but uh, it's just, you know, it's just, you know when one parent traditionally cooks certain meals and then the other parent tries to cook a meal and it's just... Not exactly the same. Obviously, you're not going to complain about it, because how fucking rude would that be when they're really stepping up to the plate? But uh, it's different, you know? It's a it's a little bit of a change. Uh, Pyro Demon Eye, hello. Stephen Raisin, hello. Zach, hello. Between Heaven and Hell, hi. Uh, 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 and Angel H, great to see you. I'm going to turn my light down a little bit, because it's a little bit intense in my face. Uh, oh, and there I go. There goes all of my color. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I need to get a better quality webcam. A problem for another day, though, I think. Uh, right now, we've got work to do. Uh, it's January 7th, 12.52 in the afternoon. We're back at the Wright & Company Law Offices, probably to check in with my dear friend, Maya. So, how do you think the trial went this morning? Uh, well, how do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get kind of out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know how, uh, know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. Although I have a hypothesis, there's a very scary girl we saw for a second. She had a giant head wound, so we'll have to learn more about her. Uh... Bobby says hello, and Jacob Welsh, I'm a few minutes late, but happy to have you here. Thank you for stopping in. Um, all we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw. The apron straps and the ribbon. And the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictions. Yep. Well, time to play a doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah! We gotta find one for Maggie, or she's gonna have a terminal case of guilty. Oh, Maya, you into the puns. How you doing, girl? Well, I'm officially at a loss as to where to start. Yeah, me too. Let's try some brainstorming. You go first, Nick. Well, I guess we should try to put Mr. Kudo's testimony to some sort of use. Yeah, that's true. And we need to figure out the identity of the waitress and who the victim really was. Somehow, I think they're the key. Uh, they're the key to the case that has got. To, I think they're. I think the key. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm a streamer. <laughs> Do you believe it? Ah, word vomit. It's my favorite thing. Somehow, I think the key to the case has got to be a Trebian. Well, then let's go back and check it out again. Oh, we should drop it on Maggie and see how she's doing too. Yeah, we probably should. All right, well, I'll come back to you if we have any more problems. In the meantime, uh, let's check on my plant, first and foremost. Oh, it's Charlie, a quite decorative plant. He's sort of a keepsake. 
Something to remember Mia by. Sure, the office is a mess, but I never forget to water this little fella. And then... Let's traverse. Let's check in with our client, see how she's doing today. Between having out, words are hard sometimes. Yeah, but you know what? I'm already gonna fumble my way through all the French words. I should at least, at the very least, be able to handle the English ones. <laughs> Truly. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But we got questions to ask her, too. Maggie! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know? All right, I guess we don't get to check on her yet. Off to Trey Bien, then. Uh, TJ Zamora! Hello, everyone. First time here. Love Phoenix Wright. Oh, well, then I can't wait for you to see me butcher this game. Keep in mind, I'm going in blind. <laughs> and I can't speak French. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime, too. That's it! Come on! Hey, that sounds like DICK! The love of my life! Oh, now just call it, hey, pal! Come on, I know you can! He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number! Huh? Oh, it looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff! What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Uh oh, it's you! I, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just, you know, listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe is having lunch here. He is. He's having the twin tea set. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Ah, oh, dick, my love. Chat with me, boy. I'm sorry you didn't win the lottery. I know you're really banking on uh, getting some extra money. Oh, this is a nightmare, pal. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now? You really drove her into a corner, you know. Hey, you always blow apart my testimony. Why of all days didn't you do it today? Well, I am sorry, dick. If I could have blown you any which way, I would have. I promise. Anyways, uh, there just weren't any holes in it for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. <laughs> Swiss cheese! Would he have preferred crumbly, like aged Parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. Maya, Jesus Christ, well, <laughs> you know what? Let's not play into anybody's sensitivities by any means. Oh, jeez. Uh, please, no, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean- Why is this happening, pal? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh, oh man. Maya, have some sensitivity with these things, all right? Would you just go up to someone? Uh, never mind. <laughs> she would, let's be fair. All right, Dick, I know you're caught up in your feels at the moment. Can we, can we talk about this lunch? So, did you like the twin tea set? Yeah, I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous my hands were shaking, pal. So, how'd it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess, I don't know how to describe it, really. It was delicate. Delicate? So you mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? Uh, ThunderPhoenix256, hello, thank you for dropping in to the chat and seeing how things go for us today. What's the matter with him? I don't know, it looks like he's thinking about something. Ah, oh, he is, and he's doing that adorable eyebrow dance. It's like the cutest thing ever, my heart is smitten. I wish I could move both eyebrows like that. I can move them together. I can kind of, kind of, kind of move one. Uh, but I can't really move the other one. There was a girl who went viral when I was in high school, known as the Eyebrow Girl. She, she, you probably could still find her videos on the internet. I don't know how relevant she is. She just posted a short little video of herself eyebrow dancing, but it like took the internet like storms. Uh, anyways, focus. I'm here to solve a mystery. <laughs> oh, that's it. I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. I just realized, bad. Oh. Ooh. Guys, what is with me? Am I going through puberty again? Every single stream I get these voice cracks. Oh, there goes my face. 
Oh, and I just realized it's bad, pal. It tasted bad. Uh, uh, it's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he finished eating. Hey, Nick. Maybe that's why Glen Elk came here. Maybe he heard about the super fierce twin tea set. By fierce, you mean fearsome. Hey, speaking of Glen Elk, that reminds me. You still hardly know anything about the guy. Well, why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here. Yes, let me learn about this handsome man, but first, talk to me about the radio. So, what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? Yeah, that's right. You said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that pal. That was nothing. I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell little old me. What were you listening to? No, nothing, really. It was just uh, a daily exercise show. Why is he lying? It was a dick. Really? We're going to go through Cyclops over this? You were listening to the lottery. What? A Cyclops? <laughs> oh, oh, this lunch special's lobster sure is great, pal. Then why are there tears in your eyes? <laughs> I mean, can I just throw a lottery ticket? Do I still have the lottery ticket in evidence? All right, I don't know if this is gonna work, but Dick, why are you making such an obvious lie? You listen to the lottery. It's only one Cyclops. Radio. All right, Dick, tell me the truth. What were you listening to, buddy? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I don't want to tell you. Well, we'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was really. I'd say it was related to the lottery. I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elk did. Oh, it's, it's like you can see right through me, pal. I know it's because I went and I got to Carl. I, I wow, word wording hard. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I swear I'm not on drugs. <laughs> I went to college. I got a degree in neuroscience. Also, I could solve a detective game with my teenage girl assistants. <laughs> no one question it. Oh, see, pal, that's why I said it was nothing. David Mahone, hello, welcome to the chat. And Zach, it would be so embarrassing my voice would crack in junior high answering a question. Oh, of course. It's the worst feeling in the world when your voice cracks and you're a guy in the middle of, like, talking in front of the class. Now I just do it publicly on the internet and document it forever. All right, the radio. Let's talk about it. Uh, I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figure I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery, and why was it such a secret? So, how'd it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Yeah, I can relate to the feeling. Curtis Price, hello! It's okay, Dick's got you tongue-tied. Yeah, Dick usually does that to me. Uh, about the same kind of ticket as Mr. L, you see. He got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do drawings live on the air, pal. It's intense! I bet that's what Mr. L was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah. Hey, what time is it now? Uh, it's just after 1.30. And are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, uh, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Uh, millionaire radio flyer, experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30 p.m. That's suspe that's suspect to me. <laughs> millionaire radio, that sounds cool. I want to try it, Nick. All right, then you buy a ticket, Maya. And have fun. Let me know how it goes. Um, all right, so we have to ask this guy questions about Glenn Elg, but first, uh, let me look at the autopsy report again. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30. That's a really wide window of time for, like, all the testimony we had about him drinking a sip of his coffee and then collapsing dead on the table. Why is there an hour? But anyways, no, the thing was, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm misremembering, I thought in, in like, the actual trial, Victor Kudo said something about, like, phoning the police or seeing the restaurant and, and establishing that it happened at around 2.30. Which is an hour later than 1.30. Which is weird. But maybe I'm not totally remembering everything correctly? Eh. <laughs> 
What? What? How the fuck are you gonna relate a poisoning to an hour-long time window? At what point did he drink the coffee? There were witnesses! Alright, anyways. Let's, uh, show our guy Glenna. Oh, yeah, this guy was a real programming genius, pal. Called him the walking computer at the place he worked. What happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Uh, Maya, bless your heart. Bless your heart and go back to waitressing. <laughs> he wasn't literally a computer girl. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Don't you have any information that's a bit more, you know, fun? Fun? I, uh... Oh, I know, pal. So, have you paid a visit to where Mr. Ogg worked yet? You might as well. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens Incorporated. Something like that. Wow, sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Uh, computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. Oh, do you? I wonder about that. Yeah, it's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. Computer firm called Blue Screens Inc., huh? All right. New world unlocked. There's nothing to talk about, right? No, okay. Uh, let's see if we can go check out the new place. See what's going on over there. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa! Look at this place. Why is there a jockey on the table? <laughs> who's who's a gam? Oh, you know who's a gambling addict? Glenn Elk. All right. First things first, boys. We're in a new environment. Put on your thinking caps. Put on your observation goggles. It's time to learn about this environment. Clearly, this looks like Glenn Elk's desk because the calendar says 12, which is not correct because it's January 7th, but he died in December. So clearly the old calendar that nobody bothered to change or clear out is Glenn Elg's. And Glenn Elg liked to gamble because he bought a lottery ticket and I now see a racehorse and a jockey, which makes me think that this man might have had a gambling problem. Whenever you associate people with racehorses, it's usually people who are addicts, <laughs> which is wrong. Um, and then there's a hell of a mess going on in the drawer. You know what? What? Ooh! Oh! Oh! A bop! A bop has fallen upon us, chat. Okay. I'm here for it. Alright. Um, I was gonna say, why don't I pull up my magnifying glass and investigate things for real? <laughs> uh, wait, which side does the green HMD go on again? Allegedly, the left side. That's what was said in court. Whether or not we believe that, we're gonna have to figure out. Uh, Alessio, hello, what happens in the last 15 minutes? Pretty much nothing, I talked to Dick. You guys know how I investigate, I investigate slowly. So it's gonna take us a little while. Wow, this place is so high tech, you can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer for Maya, they can't work without electricity, you know? I know it's like an Apple store in here. Who are you? Whoa, Samus Aran with a blue wig! <laughs> oh, wow, um, hi. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who the hell is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked educational show. <laughs> educational. My name is Lisa Basil. Lisa- Alright, boys, we, we got a pun somewhere in here, right? Lisa Basil. Lisa Basil? Lisa Basil. Liza Basil. She, and she's a robot electronics woman. Help me out, chat. I'm, the pun is flying over my head. What, what's the pun here? I'm the company director. D director? Wait, she's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. And that thing over her eye. Isn't that the same device as Glenn Elg's? She's wearing that on the, on the left side of her face. That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. <gasps> Bobby. Category is robots on the runway. Work, girls, work. <laughs> um, it's a palindrome, like... Oh, it's another palindrome, just like Glenn Elg. Oh. Wow, you know, <laughs> the entire chat. George, Jesus Christ, the pal palindrome. Can't you point these things out? You know what? If everybody at this company has palindromic names, that makes me think that this company's actually a cult. That's weird. 
Lisa Basil. Another palindrome. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Incorporated are supplied with HMDs. Then, do you write programs too? No. I just enjoy wearing this. Alright, so she's not a coder. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. Alright, let's talk to her. Girl, wow, the, the way her whole body just lights up a little bit, it's intense. Uh, Blue Screens Inc. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry, and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? Um, you lost me on the corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes. Compact Disc. Digital Optical Storage Media. Of course! CDs are used for software as well as music. Ma'am! Listen, I know that these games were designed back in the year like 2001 to 2005 or whatever, but they take place in the years like 2019 to 2022, which is what we're living now, and CDs are a thing of the past. You gotta- you gotta get the system moving, girl. Your company's gonna go bankrupt. It is a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. Whoa, oh my god, this dude. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? Um, uh, research the impact on logical access to shared global variables. Obviously, program structure influences response time and performance, so the co-independence of global variables and memory overheads is vitally important to the success of execution. Duh! God! Alright, sorry, if I knew- if I was prepared, I would have read that perfectly. You guys know I would have. I pride myself on my fast reading ability. <laughs> it's- it's the one thing I will take pride in, except for when I mess it up. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all of that? Uh, for the most part. Yeah. What I understand is that he is a computer programming engineer, and so he probably makes a crap load of money. Any of you that are still in school, coding. Coding is the future. You get a job in coding, you're gonna be rich. You're gonna be so rich, you're gonna be the richest man that ever lived. <laughs> um, yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, smile. Alright. Let's, let's get some more info out of this woman. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier too, but I couldn't get him to tell or er, but I couldn't tell him anything either because the waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens Incorporated. Hmm. Oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one, right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. Alright. Before we examine, do we want to show her anybody? <laughs> I don't know. Who might she have a good reaction to? Does this man mean anything to you? I'm sorry, that data is Super Admin Restricted Desktop Access Power Password Protected. Super Admin Restricted Desktop Password at uh, 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 words. Uh, I'm Maya, I don't know these high words. This is madness. No, Maya, that is Sparta. She won't tell us unless we say the right code word. Oh, a code word. Hmm. Sesame. Denied. <laughs> Ah, uh, if it's not Sesame, then it's gotta be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. Largely true for the 90s, right? <laughs> Before people understood about password security. Uh, there's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Alright, that's fine. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glen Elg. What do you say? Okay, fine, Maya! If you want to be the voice of reason, let's ask her about Glen Elg, then. Throw him at her face. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one, two, or one or two bugs in his personality. Gambling addiction. Lay it on me. I know it. I'm an, I'm an observant man. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a loser, perhaps. That would be the best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. 
A gambling addicted loser. <laughs> She's, she's very forthcoming with information, and you know what? Lake Thunder Phoenix says it best, where she said, Yes, I know it's terrible, sat, said with a smile on her face. This woman would be so good at throwing shade. Shade with a smile. There's a service for that. Um, what's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he really was, uh, so he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute. No, 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 you said something about him being in trouble! We gotta find out what this trouble was exactly. Talk about Glenn's troubles. Right, about Mr. Elk. Seeing some kind of trouble. I'm sorry. Why would you think that? Uh, what? Well, you literally just said something about it just now, and I know I don't always pay the closest attention, but I, I caught it. He said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. <gasps> of course. Women always have secrets. This is why I could never get along with them. <laughs> David Mahone! My job is a lot easier to understand than her crazy. Uh, Amazon for the menu, boards, and signs in and around brick and mortar restaurants for the fast food industry. Oh, David Mahone, very cool. Three Cyclox? I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Alright. Gambling addiction. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Let's gather some evidence of it, shall we? Whoa, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. Well, it looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? You know, real whiz kids work under any condition. True. There's an order to the chaos, Maya. She's trying to hint that I should try to tidy my I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. So no hurry then. Hey, this calendar! What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. No, someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? Uh, that's the day of Mr. L was murdered! Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says meet with the tiger. The tiger. Like the Tiger King? Like my big fat phony friend, Mr. Phoenix Trite? I mean, I'm sorry, Zinieb. <laughs> Mr. Zinieb. Glenn's calendar added to the court record. Interesting. Whoops. Oh, no, nope, that's the same. Whoops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, what about these notes everywhere? Wow, look at this mess. It looks like they're all betting tickets. Perfect. That's what we need. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh wow, his drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets though. Hmm, there's over 500 of them, Jesus. This many tickets would get you. What, a buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you'd try to profit from the dead, Nick. Maya, I'm taking them as evidence! Get off my dick, okay? <laughs> uh, can we ask about this crap under his desk? I guess not. Uh, can we talk to these boys? He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow! I bet that's where the pro and programmer comes from, huh? I guess he shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. You know, that's a pretty good idea, Maya. Maybe I could become old CD's apprentice! What about your spirit medium training? Oh, jeez. If this isn't the prime example of the poor postured video gamer, this hunched over like, eh, let me play my games. Come on, mom. Oh, God. We look like such cryptids. You know what? Let me sit up a little more straight. Oh, jeez. Hey, look, Nick. It's a supercomputer. It looks like he, it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Yeah, something like that. Uh, Bobby, because you love commercial jingles, the one set to Eye of the Tiger, Glenn's the man going to work. He's the one. He's on time. Got ambition. I would sing it, but but my brain needs to process it a little bit more. But thank you for the comment, Bobby. <laughs> Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. Sorta, of, kinda, of, but not really. 
they compute things. So they compute data at abilities much faster than humans. But you need humans to fix computers when they malfunction, and you need compute humans to build the computer. But a built computer can do something that the human cannot do, which is why humans built the computer. So they're kind of like interdependent upon each other. Right, Nick. Um, that explains why we don't use the computer in our office. Hey, you work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Oh. Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, the computer will laugh at you. She said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya! Not a computer! Alright, that's fine. That's great. You know, my favorite computer was tech. I guess let's examine these pillars. You know, those pillars almost look like they're moving. It's kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This office was designed with a futuristic feel in mind. Futuristic? Yes. We tried to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. It helps to soothe and calm the soul. Uh, on second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place is really unsettling. Yeah. You know, when you try to design something to look like the future, unfortunately, that tends to make designs look pretty dated when the actual future comes. <laughs> like, have you ever looked at, like... Um, movies from the 1980s that try to show you, like, a cool futuristic lab, and it's designed so... silly. Anyways, um... So we have the betting tickets. That'll help us a little bit, but is there more... Do you think we need to gather more evidence? Before we... Because she has three psych locks. I don't see anything else we can, uh... examine in here. At least not at the moment. So, unless she wants to talk to us about anything else, I can't think of anything else that would really be worth asking her, though. We might have to come back to this lady a little bit later. Let's, uh, move around a little bit. You stay right here, ma'am. Keep doing the good lord's work and, uh, do doing your sciencing, your computer sciencing. Uh, and, and I'm gonna see who else I can chat up a little bit. Let's- is anybody in the kitchen? Yes, of course. <clears throat> um, Angel H, Momo, and Paula Perof just released another awesome Ace Attorney fan animation on YouTube and Insta. Oh, are these animations that I can watch without being spoiled, or do I have to wait <laughs> till I've played more games? January 7th, Trebian Kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. Duh! I'll be back next month. We oui, natural element. I will be waiting for you. Oh jeez. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. No! I will have everything ready. I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> no, no, no! Stop it! I beg you. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. My no! This is not necessary! You can trust me, mademoiselle! Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Whoa! Objection! Phoenix, are you gonna- that's a threat! A threat of very, very serious assault! Take this woman to court! Oh no! You don't have to worry! You, you, you know, you worry far too much, mademoiselle! Maybe this will help you relax. It is La Oil of Sandalwood. I do love raw meat. Whoa! Are you coming on to me? Because same, girl. Well, from time to time. <laughs> ah! Me too, mademoiselle! How did you know? I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. Changeling DJ. It's her! I like her. Wow, she's real kind of creepy and intimidating. I kind of like her too. I'm a little scared of her. Oh, I have the shivers. I must rub some oil all over my body before I become the nervous wreck. There, oui, oui, that feels good. <laughs> oh no, this man, this man, this man. Oh, why are we still dealing with this man? 
It was her. She did it. I mean, she certainly looks evil, doesn't she? I mean, if if someone looked guilty, but is that just our bias? She also has the right hairstyle, but fr from the photo that we saw briefly, or the flashback. Oh la la! Excuse me, monsieur. M my eyes! My eyes! Oh no! Sir, what are you doing? Please, don't put the oil all over your body right in front of me! But I'm also gonna look a little bit because I think you got a little bit of a dad bod going on. And by dad bod, I mean like super ripped, jacked muscle daddy. Um, but still with that anterior pelvic t tilt. Or lordosis. I'm blushing. Oh jeez. Yes, French accent. Oh god, <laughs> the worst thing ever. Um, she sounds like one of the people I used to be friends with. Cosmetology Corner, who were you hanging out with? Your eyes! If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this! La oil of sandalwood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were just using? We can share body oils, Mansu. Alright, boy. Let's chat, you and I. <clears throat> How's your restaurant doing? I see you don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? I wonder why that is. No, you are right, Mansoor. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That way, I can give you my undivided attention and cook you la dish supreme. Whoa. <clears throat> Put it on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right. Business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is la problem. People don't understand. They think it is Trey. I just want people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays? Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? You're being extremely homophobic. <laughs> but this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I will defend it to la finale. No one will take it from me. Mm, all right, well, you know, you might want to take that up with the banks when they foreclose on your ass. So, the, the, it begs the question, who was that woman you were just talking to? Ooh la la, you saw that? Well, I did, yes, sorry. So, who was she? She looks so polite and graceful. <laughs> Maya never changed. Polite? G graceful? And she likes raw meat and fires, right? <laughs> uh, well, every gay man likes raw meat, but in a, I think in far different ways than her. I think she actually just loves to ingest tapeworms and salmonella. I'll be back next month. Oui, naturalement. Uh, I will be waiting for you. Why are we having a flashback? All right. I, I have to know if this is like a um, like a spoof thing. Like, is the game doing this to be funny? Because uh, th this happens quite a bit, especially in this third game, where like the game has always had flashbacks, but we're getting flashbacks of events that have literally transpired 60 seconds earlier. <laughs> like what? Yes, we just watched all of this transpire. You know, now that I think about it, hey Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Piece of evidence? Uh, oh, the, you think the loan? That's what I, the vibe I'm getting. He's in debt by half a million dollars. The owner is Tender Lender. Is she Tender Lender? Seems like a name that would be fitting for her. Um, you say that as if Salmonella isn't sexy. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's uh throw this thing in his face. So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with Zilla broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. Oui, they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? My bien fusu. If I did not owe them la money, I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? No, I cannot say. If I tell you that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me with the salad garnish. Ugh. 
I hope he doesn't mean that it'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I don't know, do you think she could be a cannibal? I'm gonna guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract. Am I right? <gasps> Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. We want the tea! <laughs> Gossip with us. It's just girls in here and Mr. Nick. But he's fine. He's basically like a girl. You can talk to us. It's chill. The woman just now. The woman who was here earlier. I take it she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. <gasps> Suddenly, I find myself so deep in La debt. It is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in. Oh. No, I'd say it's more of a sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. Frank, hello, welcome to the chat. Hey, George, late again, but hope that you are having a wonderful evening. Oh, I am now. Look at who I'm talking to. I got my lovely Jean Armstrong. The woman who was here, the scary woman, she is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oui, tender lender it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. <laughs> Please, no, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that. Thank you very much. Oh, we pay her a monthly stipend, but that's kind of cute. Not a lot, though. So, Tender Lender is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. Let's ask. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Whoa, I missed that. Thanks to him loaning me the money, I have to pay back half a million dollars. Wow, that's a very intense spending habit. You know what? Have you considered trying to marry Ron Delight? <laughs> he might solve all of your problems. I mean, right now he's kind of got a thing with Desi, but he looks like a twinkier version of you. And in the gay community, that's kind of a vibe. People who are gay, they like to date people that look like themselves. And you're like Big Ron versus Little Ron. The two of you, I think, would make a great power couple. And he's also mask to mask. He steals priceless jewels, which would help your spending habits. I think it's a match made in heaven. Don't tell Desi about it, though. She'll be quite upset. I am like a slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um... Who's this he? The tiger. The tiger? Interesting! Oh! The tiger is the loan shark. You know who else was meeting with the tiger on December 3rd? Glenn Elg, who we know has financial problems because he was described as a gambling loser. Which we're gonna show to the computer lady. Uh, Noah, hello! What do you call a cow with no legs? <laughs> Ground beef! Hi! There are some countries where you sh that joke will get you killed. The tiger. Oui, he is the manager of the tender lender. Terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling. His voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter, uh, as soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter rides, I start to cry. Big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Wait a second. Does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, no, this man has the presence. A most formidable personality. <laughs> Although, oui, he does have uh, spiky hair just like you. Uh, between Evan and Al, wait, did Armstrong just identify as a woman? I think, yes, in like, you know, the way that gays are like, Hunty, sweetie, girly, girl boss. You got this. You know. <laughs> I lived for that awkward silence. <gasps> oui, there is a resemblance here, I suppose. <laughs> That's right, David Mahone. He's not just a woman. He is a weak woman. Shaking out that ass back. Uh, it's Lady Angela Redrain. Hello, welcome to the chat. Thank you for popping in here. Hmm. Sounds like this alone office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit the tender lender, it is just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey Nick, if you need money, I can loan you some. As long as it's less than three dollars. 
Um, thanks for the offer, Maya. So, just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? Let's go check it out, shall we? Get your investigation caps on, boys, we got- Whoa! Oh, buddy, well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now, pal. We got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside, pal. Oh, okay. Well, see you later then. Yeah, bye. Another case? Do you think that's gonna come into play here? That's a little bit- Oh! Welcome back. <laughs> Hello? Dick? Do you have something you want to say to me? Uh, you, you probably should get going, Detective. Or you're gonna be late. Uh, actually, I, uh, I kinda got a favor to ask. It's kind of a big one. A favor? Yeah, it's for, uh, Maggie, actually. I was kinda hoping you'd give this to her for me. A box full of wieners and rice? <laughs> Dick, is this your flirting game? Sweetie, my love, hunty, girl boss, girly. Women don't want a box full of wieners. Well, actually, <laughs> some might. It, it might be their vibe. It, I mean, it's kind of cute, but it, it's kind of weird, right? It, it's a little bit out there. Um, what is that? Oh, it's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Oh, that's actually really sweet. All right, he's concerned and he wants to make sure that she's eating. Dick is good guy Dick, coming through, giving me the feels. Ugh. Maggie would be so lucky to have him. Um, Detective Gumshoe? Um, how many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could down this much meat. Maya, you have not met some of the <laughs> men that I have met. <laughs> oh, you think? Look, I love weenies. I, I just can't get enough of their tender juiciness. I'm moving on. Let me read the chat, actually. Uh, this game definitely predates frank discussions about pronouns with the cisgender community. Oh, for sure. Um, oh, God, he's going to give weenies. <laughs> Yay, welcome new people. Yeah, hello new people. Thank you guys for dropping in today. It's delightful to see you here. Between Evan and L, did Dick get that lunchbox from the Cough Up Queen? <laughs> Angel Star Cough Up Queen here. You're gonna eat these roasted weenies. Oh, uh, so will you give it to her? Uh, it took me ages to make, pal. So please, just do it. Uh, can't exactly say no to that, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox, a tenderly handmade lunchbox, fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. You know what? If this was a pre-recorded video and I edited it, the thing, the edit that I want, God, if some, if there's a person out there that ever like edits clips, what I need right here, my personal request, is the uh, the gif uh, from SpongeBob SquarePants of like the worm that's chilling inside the stomach, and then uh, the characters like drink milk or whatever. But the white milky fluid comes in from both ends of the stomach, both valves, and it just floods the character. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's a gif. It exists, and it's used commonly as a meme within the gay community for reasons I'm sure that you can guess, but I'm not going to explicitly state here. Moving on. Focus. Here to solve a mystery. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? Oh, I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. Right. God, he's finally gone. I can probably get some work done now. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so we wanted to go to Vitamin Square. And from Vitamin Square, check out the loan office. And then eventually give Maggie her lunch. We've got a couple of rules out there. Definitely a rule 34 of that lunchbox out there. <laughs> Bobby, I'm lost. What's happening right now? January 7th, Vitamin Square. That's where we're at. Um, hello, and thank you for the welcome. I found you recently, but haven't been able to watch you. Excited to be here, and I gotta say, you're really fun. Aw, thank you so much. It's been, it's, I've been having the time of my life doing these streams. Uh, it, it's, it's a small, little, homey community, and we're all becoming friends here. Hmm, I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway. At least, not for now. Besides, I need more seed today, and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. 
Ha 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 ha, Phoenix is so funny. Uh, should we examine the bike really quick? Hey, check this out! Now, I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Otherwise, you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger, loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. What? Don't worry! Someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? I don't know, but let's come back here later. Can we get to Tender Lender? I'm curious of- Whoa! Curious to see what's going on in this place. Wow. This looks like the office straight out of the Jersey Shore. You got a punching bag in the middle of the office. Love that. Win through compromise. It's a nice uh, slogan. Very, very fancy coats over in the back there. And a boom box! And also, what the hell is this thing with the face up in the... that way? I don't know. Wow. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? It looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Huh? Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. There she is. You're here to discuss alone. Uh, n no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. Sh she's gone, just like that. I guess we'll have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick! Yes, Maya! I was waiting for it. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's get intrusive and take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course! No one will ever know- Oh! Coffee. Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy quietly. Um, yes, thank you. Don't touch the desk, please. Uh, Nick, uh, let's get out of here. Oh, now she wants to leave. Absolutely not. We came here to do an investigation, and we're going to do an investigation. This looks suspicious. Oh, no. Oh, no. Someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. That's going to be a nightmare to clean off. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be, like, super heavy? Oh, hey! There's a book of matches here, too. Matches, huh? Places don't give those out much nowadays. Wait a second! What is it? Look what's printed on the cover! It says Trebien! You might have a hard time seeing it because it's behind the, uh, the chat, but it's there. Uh, Trebian matches. Added to the court record. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Hmm. Yeah, the pilot light for the office box keeps. Uh, the pilot light for the office boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Um, also suspicious, as long as we're talking about these codes, one of these is mine! Look at my little, my little fake badge, my little fake phoenix suit. Hey, look at this Parisian style, Parisian style coat, it's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me, Maya. <laughs> Guess I haven't got an eye for fashion, though. Hey, look at this! This suit's the same color as the one you wear, Mr. Nick. I'm sorry, Nick? She doesn't say Mr. Nick, that's a pearls thing. Huh, the same color as my suit. Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. Nick, you gotta take a look at this. Some cake. Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Um, yeah, sure. Thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise. Uh, sh sure. T did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, I heard her, Maya. I do have my eye on you. Only so I could take care of you. Understand. Uh, 
I'm scared, Nick. So, uh, what were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the label of the soup! That's- Oh my god, it's made out of cardboard! <laughs> Phoenix Wright, Paper Mario crossover confirmed! That's an attorney's badge! <laughs> it looks so terrible! Is the tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing, it's made of paper! Uh, made of cardboard and painted to look off. <laughs> painted to look authentic. Really? Are you sure about that? Angelish, I knew it was a pimp coat! For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Hey, why doesn't anyone recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? I don't know. Uh, let's go with the boombox. Oh god, there's so many things to look at in here, honestly. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud, uh, it's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open! I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished the coffee? Ah! Yeah, yeah, we did things. It was lovely. It was great. All right? Fantastic. So, you drank it all. <laughs> um. <clears throat> if you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. <sighs> that coffee! Uh, it was laced with something! Uh, I'm sure of it! Nick, my stomach, it's killing me! Oh wait, uh, maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. Hey, my uh, breakfast burger is the way to go. I sure hope so. We'd better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? It's... It's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc and pen. Is it MC Bomber? Yes. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Uh, let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. Uh, no. Uh, that woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. Found at Tender Lender, a sample disc with the name written in marker. <clears throat> Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm coming through the doors! You better pay attention to me! Wow, it just goes and goes and goes. Listen, I can't commit to a scream like that. I'm sure my neighbors already hate my guts for streaming, period. If I screamed that loud for that long, they'd probably try to get me evicted. <laughs> ah! Maya, come out from under the desk. Oh, jeez. Oh, but that song! Boys, we are getting slapped across the face with another bop! <laughs> Hmm. What are you two doing snooping around my office for? Uh, n n nothing we were just- Gah! My precious carpet! He has got ash on my rug! You was gonna wash your ugly feet and never came through my door! He's gonna wish it! It, it wasn't us! Ah, oh, you just wanna argue with me, pal! Is that what you was doing? You think you can take one out on me? I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs! Uh, n Nick? Oh. Don Tigre. You're back. That voice! It's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. <clears throat> Jesus. I'm sorry, Don Tigre. I knocked over the ashtray earlier and... Oh God, has she got a death wish or what? All right! Huh? The sprite? Oh, jeez. My dude, we gotta keep you out of the tanning beds. Ah, oh, forget about it, Violetta. It's not in. What? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. I'm adorable, actually. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Ah! Phoenix Wright! Yeah? You's either crazy or you just plain stupid to chase after me! I worked so hard, but now you've got to come and mess up my plan! So, it was him. He is my phony. Heh, but I don't care. No one gets in my way. 
What? I, 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 excuse me? What's going on? Oh my god, that tongue action though. You know what? The vampire teeth, a little bit intense, but what does that tongue do though? Uh, also, y you clearly got a nicely defined chest. Um, heh, you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things I want to ask. Oh, jeez. No questions. This is the last time we meet. Is it though? W wait a second, please. Uh, that was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Oh, like you're one to talk. I didn't hear you scream. You didn't scream hold it or objection. Yeah, but I'm a girl, Nick. You're supposed to be the man. The espresso. No! Ah! And cookies. Uh, this woman is definitely not good for my heart. Josh Scott, hello! Welcome to the chat! Um, the sprite is the visual embodiment of the term simp. <laughs> now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? V Violetta? Violetta? Ah. I don't know that I really care what your name is supposed to be. Do you have a profile, though? That's what's got me curious. Age unknown. All right, boys, keep your dirty pervert minds to yourselves. We don't know if she's above age yet. Same thing with Lisa Basil. Possibly part of the staff, a tender lender. A thoroughly bitter person. Don't hit on the villain. All right. Duly noted. I will stop hitting on the villains. Probably. Let's talk to this girl, though. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Lender. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business. A conscientious rate of interest and an attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling this sentence isn't going to end well? We will tenderly lend you the little bit of extra here at Tender Lender. Hey, Nick. Things are a bit tight for writing company at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game, for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take a loan from a place like this? I don't think so. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> So, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We'd give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. Right. Okay, thanks, Maya. That really makes me feel better. So, um, do you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger. Furio Tigre. F Furio Tigre. So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Is it Tigre or is it still Tiger? Zinnieb's got a real name, Nick. Hurry up and find out more about him. Let's. Can we present his profile? Furio Tigre, age 42. Oh my god, Phoenix Wright is not. Wait, where's. Oh, do I not have Phoenix's profile anymore? That's a sham. Well, Phoenix Wright is only like. Tw he's my age. He's like 26, I think. The head of Tender Lender Loan Company, also known as the Tiger. Alright. Oh, right, right, right. I was gonna present it to him. <laughs> Girl, talk to me about this man. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tigre. Mr. Tiger? Should I be pronouncing it tiger? I don't know. Cookie. Um, sure. How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. <laughs> um, go ahead, Nick. The honor's all yours. Oh, no, no. Honestly, ladies first, Maya. <laughs> No matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and this scary girl doing working together? We're lovers. Oh, she better be over 18. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Don Tigre my life. He's the one who saved me. The... Tiger saved you? Please. 
address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to... Okay, okay, D Don Tigre, of course. I'm sorry. I saved her life. Uh, I'd sure like to know how that happened. Yeah, can we ask about that? I'm very frail. You see... What? No! No! Girl, look at those arms! You, you, you frail... Who could have gotten that impression? How's your skull? Just recently, I died. Once. Wow. Haven't we all met a girl like this in our lives, where you have a conversation with her, and you just walk away from the conversation being like, What a... What am I doing with my life? You died? About four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. Oh... Oh, boys, we're getting serious tonight. Some music, though. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the River Styx. But Don Tigre, he saved me. He gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. That's a weird way to commit your life to somebody, but also I don't think you owe your life to someone just because they saved it. That sounds like entrapment. Still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you got the bandage on your head? <laughs> this? Yeah, what's the story with that? They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. <laughs> fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So, that's the injury you were talking about before when you had... when you had died. Oh, I don't want to talk about it, I see. Got a little- Whoa! Four! Jeez! Ah, oh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Yeah, same here, but we, we gotta find out the truth. Something tells me we're not gonna get to it right yet. Can we still examine things in the room? Let's try. That's one impressive desk on one impressive rug. It's solid gold, Nick! Gold! Just look at that shine! Only real gold shines like that. Would you really want such a shiny desk, though? I don't know, but let's see what it's like to sit at a solid gold desk. Wow! I'm completely- Maya, please don't sit on his desk! Because it's completely dazzling. I can see up my nose in the reflection. That's gotta be really distracting. So the desk isn't practical. No surprise there. Uh, punching bag? What's this? punching bag, Maya. What? No way! You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What, what do you mean, walking around with it? The design's gross to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. And why is it called a punching bag anyways? Don't people know messenger bags are in? Huh? G sweetheart, we gotta get you out more. I knew it. I was right before. Back at Trebian, Paris fashion is way more my thing. I really hope she's yanking my chain this time around. <laughs> Alright, this thing I'm, I'm highly curious about. Let's see, this round doll thing, I think it's called a Daruma, I think. Oh, one of you guys said that in the chat, you were talking about that, a Daruma. I figured I'd read a book or two and become more cultured, in case you were wondering. I rely on strangers on the internet to make me more cultured. <laughs> you mean you aren't making this stuff up for a change? I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always write himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Oh, he's like those beans that you try to knock over and they hold them, they haul themselves right back up balancing. Uh, only if I feel like dying. Now this yellow thing. This is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king. Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reversey person, you know? Assuming she knows what she's talking about. These aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Hey! There's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. Well, what does it say? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. 
Does he even have one? Oh, jeez. Did he get his car detailed shortly after somebody got in a mysterious accident? $15,000 to replace a bumper and a light, which you do after you run into somebody. Isn't that the case? That's insane. Oh! <laughs> I had a thought. It's a wild thought. We should really check in on Violetta. Do you think? Do you think she might have might have maybe got hit by a might maybe got hit by a car and her skull maybe left a dent inside of a bumper that cost fifteen thousand dollars to replace? The car's registered to the Cadaverinis. Oh, oh, so it's not the Tiger's car. Okay, so my wild hypothesis was like, oh my god, did the Tiger King run over Violetta with his car? But if it's not his car, maybe he he loves Violetta, so maybe he's going after the people who did run her over? Oh, that's bad news for those people. Maybe a hit and run. Interesting. Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? I think he's gonna try and commit an assassination. <clears throat> Car repair bill for $15,000, paid by T-Grade to the Cadav- Oh! He paid it! To the Cadaverini family. I'm very lost now. So he paid the bill. I'm assuming- It's a stretch in logic, but there's, there's only a finite number of characters in this universe, and everything is always related. We have a girl who clearly was left mangled from something. I think she was probably left mangled from a car accident. And he paid for the repair bill? For the car? Who are the- <sighs> Also, the fact that the family name is Cadaverini, which is like, cadaver, which is like, spooky, and we only have one girl who is like, spooky. Is she Violetta Cada Cadaverini? Maybe she's the one who caused the car accident? She drove into something and hurt herself? Maybe that's more likely, and so he paid off her debt to cover the accident for her? I guess that would also make sense. Violetta Cadaverini. I'm hypothesizing, no spoilers, but this little brain, it's tinkering away. Um, a doormat for supercars ran 1500 back in 2012. There was a mechanic shop in the parking garage in one of those neighborhoods in Chicago when I worked there. Interesting. I love learning about economics. <laughs> okay, um, so that's a very valuable clue then. Weird, but valuable clue. Um, win through compromise. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. It must mean something if they took the trouble to frame it like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um. That. Ah! That's Tenderlender's guiding principle. Oh. Compromise the customer to win. Oh! <laughs> oh, I see. Um, how about you, Nick? Yeah, uh, well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I guess we're okay. And that's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers. I guess not. Um, is that everything to do here, then? I do feel like we got some valuable information. So maybe we should uh, continue our investigation elsewhere. All right, girl, it was delightful talking to you. I'm gonna come back and break open your Cyclox and fill you with holes. So you look forward to that. It's gonna be delightful and an experience for all of us. Until then though, I think we should probably make our way, oh. I was gonna say probably make our way to the detention center to see Maggie if she's out of questioning yet. But first, what's about to happen here? There he is! Old CD's back, feeding the pigeons again! Ah, uh, there! Take this!
this and this and get out of my back! Uh, like I thought. He's really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we can. What? Why? Hello, old man! <laughs> what are you doing, Maya? Huh? Kya! Hey, he just turned his back on us. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I bet I really hurt his pride this morning in court. His ego. Hey, Mr. Kudo. Pigeon, pigeon, yeah. Look, we really need to talk to you all, right? Ah, with the demons and with good fortune. Ow, seeds, shell splinters. Painful. Hmm, I always knew you were a demon, Maya. All right. Well, now that you brought his attention on us, I guess we got to talk to him. Today's trial. How you feeling about it, buddy? Look, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Yeah, everyone will be talking about me behind my back now! The dirty old man who was so busy looking at the servant girl's backside that he can't even remember her face! A filthy, depraved animal! That's what you did to me! You begged me as a dirty pervert! You Mr. Phoenix, right? No, 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 not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw what that reach, I saw the way just put it in! She put some white powder into the young lad's javachino! Um, we hear you. And another thing! The young layabout was wearing an earpiece! On the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles! Right, we're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the face, so what? I know what I saw, I tell ya! I tell ya! I tell ya! Okay, dude, chill. Take it easy, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy! Has anyone ever told you that the worst thing you can do is tell someone who's not calm is to tell them to calm down? You spiky haired brat, take this! <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Let's pivot. Let's change the subject and talk about his career as an embroiderer. <laughs> um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Yeah, the modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Um, surely it's not that. I come from a long line of craftsmen, right back to the time of the shoguns. You hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer, I was born one. Um, actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I, I, I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose. Whoa, is that your fetish? And scream right down his ear hole! Objection! Oh. So, did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? Maya, I don't think that's quite it. I think he's just in a bad mood. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside of me and it's ready to burst out! Whoa! Keep that away from me. If we let him start rambling now, we might never get him to shut up. What should I do? Cut in or suck it up? Oh no! Do you think I need to let him ramble to get some valuable information? I don't know if my voice is going to be able to handle this. Alright, chat. Wish us all luck for whatever is about to happen when I say suck it up. Okay. I guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then, is there? Of course not, you idiot! I'm all I'm, all I'm good for nowadays is running errands! Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly! Buy some bread, cramps! Take the dog for a walk, granddad! Feed the pigeons, old man! What am I? Some sort of two-pig community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread! Now that I can understand! But wh what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say that they mean? Get lost! That's what they're trying to say! Oh yeah! I'm just an inconvenience! You see, oh, this is a little sad actually, because this is actually a very real thing. Old people often do feel very alone in the world because they feel that people don't want to be around them because people don't want to be around them. <laughs> and it is, uh, it's just, it is one of those really, really sad things. And, and it affects so many people. Old, being old is one thing. You know, an, an, in other communities of people, uh, talk about this all the time. The gay community has a huge problem with this. Gay people that don't fit, like, a very basic-looking white Chad stereotype, uh, they often talk about how they kind of get handled or kind of, like, excused away when they try to go to gay events because they don't meet the stereotype of, like, what people want to talk to. And so... 
God, like, you, you hear that- I, I've heard stories of, like, some of my friends, personally, and then also people, like, on TikTok who talk about, like, their experiences going to gay bars and leaving crying because literally nobody will talk to them. And that's so sad, especially in a community where it's, like, you want to feel like you have people who are like you and are accepting when you feel so ostracized by society for your sexuality. You finally go to a place that meets your whole demeanor and you're still kind of blown off by people who are like, you're not pretty enough for me to be interested in talking to. It's just, ugh. It's, it's a very seedy, ugly thing. And um, at that restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? No, sir, I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute, what did he just say? At home and at that restaurant? Wait, 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 hold, hold, hold the phone here. By restaurant, are you talking about Travian? Did you get asked to run an errand there? Yes, I did! The very day that young brat was poisoned! What? Well, what were you asked to do? So, on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? I'm glad you asked, boy, because I'll tell you what I was asked to do! All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table! The serving girl collapsed! And I broke that face! It all happened so fast! I was in a bit of a daze, you see! Then the owner shouted over to me! Excuse me, moi! You call the police! Call them yourself, I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time! So, did you end up calling the police? Well, like I said, I was in a bit of a daze! Did you call them on your cell phone? God, do I look like I have one of those new fangled thingamajigs? I went out looking for a payphone, of course! You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around five minutes or so. Five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened... Yes, sirree! The owner was at Travian on his own! Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd given me the chance! But all you bullied me out of the car room! Thank you, Mr. Cadeau. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait a minute, if that's the case, there's more I gotta say! Oh yeah, I remember something else. Bailiff, squat this witness out of the courtroom! It's not my fault! You're the ones to blame! Well, you could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Cudeau was the one who called the police? Yes! What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. All right, let's start hypothesizing because we've got our we've got our sick beat of hypothesis movement, and th pieces of the puzzle are coming together. The cogs in my brain are turning. And I think I have an I think I have an idea of what had happened. So <clears throat> there's I, I don't know all the details, but for what we're talking about right now, when the owner was alone in the restaurant, because witness who's unrelated to Tender Lender is gone. The owner, Jean Claude is tied to Tender Lender. The victim, Glenn Elk, we are assuming at this moment in time, might have also been tied to Tender Lender because he clearly has a gambling addiction. We're gonna we're gonna get there. We're gonna show that. I, I know it in my head. I'm gonna find a way to show it to the courts. <laughs> or to the lady at the job. We're gonna figure it out. My hypothesis is that perhaps Glenn Elg, not paying back his debts because he was such a gambling loser, got on the uh, chopping block for Tender Lender, and they might have figured out a way to kill him by using the girl as a fake waitress. Then they might have manipulated Jean Claude into helping them to cover their tracks or kind of like cover for them because he owes them so much money still. And so, therefore, I think because <laughs> this has been my presentation. Things are starting to come together. How they pulled off the idea of the old man not seeing the second person at the table still confuses me. How the waitress, how, how the other girl might have posed as the waitress still confuses me. There's details missing and we're gonna figure them out, but I think the picture is starting to unfold. I'm, 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 I'm thinking hard, I'm a scientist. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman, I mean, man, alone in the restaurant. Uh, Mr. Cudeau might have been chased out of the place on purpose. 
what do you mean? Well, maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Oh! Oh, sure, you go ahead and say I was in the way as usual! I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead! We need to get more details about what exactly happened. From Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Well, I guess that means we've got people to question. Uh, we were already on our way to try and see Maggie, so let's see if we can find her. Let's go back to Trebian. Oh, this music is so charming. And let's go to the detention center. See if our girl's out of questioning now. January 7th, detention center, visitor's room. Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. So, they finished questioning you. Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Hey, the amount of times I've been told, George, you really nailed that old man, is, uh... Just this once, actually. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one, sir. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident, anyway. Is it possible she's the one misremembering things? Maybe. Um, oh, she looks so sad. Well, girl, you just wait, because I've got a surprise for you coming up. It's a box full of wieners. But first, let's chat with her. Hey, Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep! There are just too many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. Furio Tigre. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? So you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber Maya. That name was scrolled onto the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. Me, in every single case. After the incident. You said that you passed out when the victim Glenn Elk collapsed, right? Yes. It's so embarrassing, I... I mean, I used to be a cop. Yeah, but not a very good one. <laughs> when I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So, between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on scene, you have no idea what went on at Trebien. Well, no. No idea at all. Why, is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old CD wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, you were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No! You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? It's the way it's looking. When you consider the facts... It's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this case at all. Um, Frank, I guess you could say no one could touch the MC Hammer. The, oh, the MC Bomber. Wait, what? Hammer time. <laughs> Can't touch this. It's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. And... John Armstrong has a, a little bit of a motive because he's grotesquely in debt. I don't know. The things that man say don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old CD. Let's. Present his profile to her. Where is he? 
Maggie, what do you got to say about Victor Kudo? I know he was really attracted to your legs. Ah, I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a court, uh, I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. Feels like forever since I saw the waitress, since I saw a waitress as slippery as that old man. A witness, a witness as slippery as, wow, wow, reading, what? Uh, guys, I'm a little bit blind, so let's be fair, I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> Feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Maya! She kind of likes him a little bit. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? But I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie. If there's something on your mind, you gotta tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Okay. Victor's testimony. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out to you as odd? Well, actually, yeah. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite... What? Well, you see... When I took the coffee over to the victim's table. It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. What? Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? <laughs> no, no, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Did she have a giant head wound? <laughs> well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So wait, what did this woman look like? Maya coming in with the important questions. Well, she was sort of creepy, and she had kind of a cackling laugh. Creepy. Cackling? I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently. Let's present her profile, see if uh, she recognizes her. Was it this? Oh, wait. Present. <laughs> Presente. Was it this woman? I know I used to be on the police force, sir, but I'm incarcerated now, so I can't use my connections to help you. Okay, fine. I guess she's not the one to talk to about that. That's okay. What was the next thing on my objective? We probably wanted to talk to Jean a little bit more. Maybe we could see if he's around. Uh, oh, shoot! I almost forgot! Ma'am, you need your weenies! It was... Very, very adamant by Dick that that these get given to you. Oh yeah, I've got something you're gonna love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make you such a nice lunchbox? Oh, Detective Gumshoe. He's really worried about you, you know. It looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. Maya being a wingman after she totally brutalized Dick earlier. <laughs> there you go, Maya. Hype him up. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. <laughs> and anyway, I hate weenies. Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But, but... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. And Maya, I know that you and I are both big fans of a nice juicy wiener, so... We should probably dig into this. I guess you're right, Nick. <laughs> We are big fans of big juicy wieners. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Wow, did we just eat it in front of her? All of them? There was a lot. Well, how was it? Really hit the spot, you know? I love weenies. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. <laughs> um, that's actually so sad. So, that, that didn't unlock anything for us? Oh, maybe we have to go break the bad news to Dick. Um, you think Twitter is down? Is Twitter not working? I don't have my phone on me. That would be a shame. January 7th, police station, criminal affairs department. Ah, oh, the main server just went up in smoke. 
Why the heck is the press conference set up yet? Isn't it set up yet? The superintendents are here already! Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet, too. I told you to stop using your computer, Chief! You can't be watching that stuff on company time! But I'm watching videos online! I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas! <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait, Chief. I'm throwing on the switch! No! Just when some young guy was about to confess his son's hot to trot girlfriend! Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something's gotta be going down, something big. Huh? Oh, what are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! Hey, look, you can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. What? Look, we got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus, pal! Oh no, the coronavirus! It's the year 2020! How could I have missed this? This is terrible! A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system! Oh! The old type of virus. You know what? Before the coronavirus, when I heard the word virus, I used to think about computer systems. Things have changed. But I really need to ask you some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll ask about all this. Alright, look, I'm only gonna say this once! So listen up, pal! Yes? No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay, wait, has Dick borrowed money from Tender Lender before? If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles. Nang in there, pal. Um, no, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well then, let's see. Tender letters are considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. It seems they ran into trouble just recently. Look, those guys have been pretty heavy-handed, calling in all their debts. Really? So don't go poking your nose around their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute! What did he just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We'd better find out what the story is with this lady. Let's show him... her picture. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's the girl that works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse than that? Look, her name's Viola Cadaverini. Called it. Point for me. Oh my god. Who is this man? She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Ah, uh, Bruto Cadaverini is the boss of the Cadaverini family, sir. Cadaverini's? That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're too powerful for the police. You're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? Um, no, that... <laughs> taking on the Cadaverinis was not on my to-do list today, Dick. I better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Yeah, can I? I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but... Who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? They're a bunch of scary people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scary. They got some serious clout in their criminal underworld. They're clout chasers. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? Yeah, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market, pal. Black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it. Ah, uh, sure, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini. I mean, no one. Interesting. So, Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss, then? Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him, pal. So, how did she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight? Yeah, they're lovers. That's what it said in a file I read related to Maggie's case. Seems like a pretty important clue. Alright, so we'll have to look into that. We'll have to ask about the computer viruses. Uh, Frank! Oof! 
George did not read, sector is clear. What? Uh, oh crap, it's a spoiler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Scott, I hate how before COVID virus was just like something you refer to offhand and now it's like the only thing you can refer to as the virus. <laughs> uh, why does this feel like a thinly veiled reference to the Yakuza? Probably is. Uh, and Alicio, uh, I didn't mean yours, I meant on top of your comment. All right, sounds like you guys are having a lovely conversation amongst yourselves. <laughs> so what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know, pal. <laughs> Dick, always pulling through for me with the best answers. Wait, what? Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal? Here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. Look at that face, pal. You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, oh, well, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Uh, part of me wants to get my PhD solely so that I can make people call me doctor. <laughs> Is it petty? Absolutely. Will you, will I be poor? Absolutely. Will it be satisfying? Absolutely. Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine, look, I'm not an expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. All right, boys. Educational caps, this is the gratuitous educational content you guys are all here for. Let's learn, what is a virus? <clears throat> a virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? Oh, you mean it makes the machine go boom and explode, pal? No. The damage is, um, well, it's all internal. Oh, so the inside goes boom, right? No. Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all of that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary. Yes. And what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Ah, just like a real virus. But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Who'd want to destroy it? No, people don't infect their own machines, Dick. They send the virus to someone else's. <gasps> That's horrible! Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right! Then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court. He'd be too sick. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Given the serious nature of some of the newer viruses we're dealing with, um, that's now considered a crime. Like, a much more serious crime. It was probably always considered a crime. I don't think you were ever allowed to intentionally sneeze on people, but it's treated much more seriously these days. <clears throat> you really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. What? What? Who? What? When? Where? And why do I divide? <laughs> and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyways. That's what a computer virus is. It's a bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kinda feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard of it before, too. Ugh. MC Bomber... ...is a virus. It's a computer virus, it's not a band. You put it into your, your disk drive and then, boops! You've infected your computer. Do I have the CD? Yeah, can I present this to him? Detective Gumshoe. About this. What, I'm trying to- Ah! This is it, pal! That stupid name, I remember it now! I thought so, here it comes. Um... Don't just nod yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Mai. You don't have to cry about it. I am scribbled on that sports paper and written on this CD! That's the name of the virus! MC Bomber! What? Yeah, the virus that's just infected every computer in the station, pal! It's MC Bomber! Great. Can you give us the details, please? Talk to us. Well, we already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back, pal. A group of criminals issued a series of demands in the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? 
I don't know. Some odd shots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah, it's in every computer and every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts, pal. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. You know, all this stuff with criminals and viruses, dude, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Thank you, Maya. Uh, apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. Who do we know that's been described as a real genius? Glen Elg has been described as a real genius. Glen Elg made the virus. Stands to make a lot of money from something like that. He had demands. Could Glen Elg have been the guy who asked the police for these demands? That would be an interesting twist in this case. Maybe because he was desperate for money. Maybe he was trying to meet with Tender Lender to sell, to give them the virus to cancel out his debts that we're still assuming that he had with Tender Lender. A, a lot of ideas are spinning in my head. More pieces of this puzzle are coming together. I'm gonna figure it out, guys. I'm a little Veronica Mars in the making. <laughs> Look, the focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Interesting. Further evidence of my hypothesis. <laughs> yeah, because this one's so powerful. They're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? MC Bomber updating the court record. Oh, I can't believe it. I almost forgot the most important thing. And that is, you know, the lunchbox. How'd everything go? Oh no. Lunchbox? You remember the weenies? So? Yeah, how did my weenie taste when it went down the hatch? Dick, I've waited through three Phoenix Wright games to hear you say these words to me. And they're intended for some dumb broad who's been arrested for murder three times. But guess what? She didn't eat them. I did, and they tasted juicy. Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said? Really? Well, not exactly. Ah, oh, don't worry about it, Belle. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, huh, pal? Deliver this. <laughs> that girl needs some more weenies stuffed in her. Sure is a heavy burden in more ways than one. Oh, I could just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring that to her. Weenies? Again, Nick? Don't tell me we have to eat all of these, too. <laughs> Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya again. I really can't eat anymore. Shit. Wow. So, are we gonna go try and give these weenies back to Maggie? Oh, she's not here right now. I guess not. Um, is anything happening at Trebian? It doesn't appear to be the case. Anything happening in the kitchen? Yes. What's happening here? We haven't been in here before. Well, today. Um, it looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. But the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Well, you can if you have no customers. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Ugh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us. On purpose. Maybe he is. Is there anything suspicious here? Or is it all the same from yesterday? Um, this all looks the same. Oh yeah, it's all the same. Okay. Shoot! Let's go to Vitamin Square. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the way his theme just slaps you in the face. Um, actually, let's go to... Um, I have an idea. Let's go to... Uh, Trebian. Let's go to Blue Screens Incorporated. And let me try... Something out here. 
I don't know if we're ready for this, but let me let me let me tinker around with some of my psych locks and see what we got. Ma'am, it's been a while. How's your job going? Can I talk to you about a computer virus? Glenn's troubles. All right. How about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Eld was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. Who is she talking about? I guess I'd better just take the shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg's troubles have something to do with this? Where are... Do I have those tickets? Yes. Let me try this. What is that? It's a bunch of horse racing tickets. All losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortune is immoral. Um, computers aren't supposed to judge morality, actually. You're just supposed to tell me information. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glen Elk. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the available facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. He had 500 of them! <laughs> yeah, but not everyone buys as many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? He, we know that he was also, where's my t lottery ticket? He was also gambling in the lottery. The lottery, horse racing, he bought a lot of tickets, and he lost a lot of times. That's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps? Um, no. You are right, Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example. Do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yes, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars, in the end. But that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problems with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Alright, context clues. I suspect he got involved with this guy, who is ferocious and furious. Do you think his profile will work? I hope it does. Let's give it a shot! Furio Tigre, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Wow, shots fired. <laughs> like you're one to talk. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. Um, no, I mean about Mr. Elg. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the tig Tiger knew each other. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do I? Wait, 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 wait. What did this say again? Meet with the Tiger. Perfect. God. <laughs> Almost forgot about that. Furio Tigre, a.k.a. The Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No. It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch. Let me take a look at something really quick. Aha. 
see that? We've got 100,000. We got it crossed off and we got MC Bomber. Maybe he was selling MC Bomber for the money. That makes sense, I think. Although that seems pretty cheap because they said that it was potentially worth millions, right? But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Oh! Ah! Light bulb moment! I figured it out. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I might be making an ass out of myself. Glenn Elg. Let me, let me paint a picture for you guys right now, and I'm gonna prove that I am a genius. <laughs> well, very strong words spoken for playing a video game. Glenn Elg is a man who was in financial trouble. He was a loser, had a lot of gambling habits that cost him a lot of money. He had to come up with something. Fortunately, he's a skilled man who has an education. He's a computer programmer. He's like, hey, dude, look, I can't pay you the $100,000. Let me give you this computer virus. I will design a virus. This virus will be able to do some serious damage. It's going to be worth a lot of money. It's going to be worth more than $100,000. Let me give you this, and you cancel out my debt. That was probably what their meeting was going to be about with the loan shark, the Tiger King. While the deal's about to go down... Glenn Elg wins half a million dollars from a lottery ticket. Now what happens if you're in the middle of trying to sell this super valuable thing because you're in financial debt, but then you win a giant lump sum of money that would be able to cover your measly $100,000 debt? You might want to cancel the deal and be like, Oh, screw that, I'm not selling you MC Bomber. Here's your $100,000. Bye, asshole. And who might not like that? The Tiger King might not like that so much that he might decide this dude needs to die and then he might kill you There's still details that are missing there. That's that's what court is for. I, I'm gonna figure out the rest, but I think that that might be What sort of happened or maybe I'm dead wrong <laughs> but I, I th That's my current hypothesis Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit that good good luck Okay so, the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but... He said he would use his talents to repay the money. With MC Bomber. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question. Was it by any chance this? MC Bomber. Well, this is it, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Changeling DJ, sound logic, yeah. The details of how he did it, I still have to figure that out. <laughs> There's a lot of confusing bits and pieces about the testimony. So painting it in court, that's going to be kind of tough. <laughs> but <laughs> isn't that a huge risk for Tiger just to kill a person without a plan for some more money? I mean, if he understood how valuable the MC Bomber program could be worth, I don't know, it seems like a guy who might take a risk. I don't know, I'm spitballing here. I still have to build my case. <laughs> I'm not ready to face the judge yet. This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No. I was hoping she would short circuit a little bit. All right, Glenn's troubles, let's hear it. Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. Even on a en uh, programming engineer's salary? Mm. So. So, he said he was taking on some extra work. Something a bit risky. Risky, how? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trade the End. Where do you come up with these ideas, Maya? <laughs> That's it. Got a $100,000 debt? Go to a maid cafe and become a waitress. So, it's safe to say that Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus, yes. 
It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course. But still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. See, that's the kind of money that a person would kill for. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. This date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. MC Bomber updated in the court record. I guess we won't be needing those horse racing tickets anymore. Cool, get rid of those. Use the trash can, Nick! Nick, how are you gonna not use the trash? Alright, so that's very interesting. Maybe... Um... We've learned a lot of very valuable information. Unfortunately, boys, we've hit our two-hour mark. Um, so, well, I, I, I've already mentioned I don't love doing this. The last time we did it, we had to stop a little bit short of the investigation, but it still kind of worked out for us. We were able to finish the investigation and then also finish off a trial segment. I'm guessing, and I could be wrong, I'm guessing that the next trial is probably like the big trial, which means it's probably a two-part trial. Which means that maybe the part one we can kind of get through in a reasonable time frame and we can do it on top of whatever's left in this investigation. I know we still have psych locks for Violetta and we probably have to talk to Jean Armstrong. It seems like we've got at least, I don't know, 15, 20, 25, 30. <laughs> I don't, I'm really bad at judging time. It seems like we've got some time to go through and it seems like we've reached the end of our time for now. So I think what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna save. I think we've learned a lot in this investigation. I think tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, we will close out the investigation, figure out the last couple of details, and then I'll try to piece the puzzle together so that the judge doesn't uh, rip me a new asshole in court tomorrow. And we can help Maggie Bird. Right. It's about helping clients. That's my job. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for these two hours. It has been a fantastic stream. New faces, thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me. It's been delightful. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. You'll get uh, more information. I stream at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. You can see me tomorrow. Uh, which is, is tomorrow Friday? Or is, yeah, tomorrow's Friday, so I will be here. Um... What else? Please leave a like if you've been here watching this video. That is also super helpful. Engagement really does a lot. And so this is just a fun time. I'm living my life. That's all for me for tonight. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evenings. And uh, cool. Toodles, fam.